Good morning. Thank you, Nancy, for that beautiful prelude. It's a musical introduction to this time of worship. I am Chaplain Audrey Kanegi, and I welcome all of you. To those of you gathered at Welsh Mountain Home and in the various places around Landis Homes, you are welcome to this time of worship. I also want to welcome Kate Greaser from Lancaster Mennonite School, who will be sharing the message a little bit later. Also, Campus Corral, who's going to be helping us uh, with our congregational singing, and a special welcome to some guest students from Germany who are here for three weeks. We are glad that you are here. And as together this morning, we are going to be thinking of and pondering and wondering what it means to follow Jesus on the road. So join me in the call to worship found in your program. I'm going to read the light part, and I will join you in reading the dark print. Jesus calls us to praise and prayer, to song and silence. Jesus calls us to worship. Jesus calls us to hearing and healing, to service and solidarity. Jesus calls us to love. We hear the call of Christ. We worship together with joy. So I'm going to invite Kit Baker, who is the director of the Lancaster Mennonite Campus Chorale, and students to come and join us in our congregational singing this morning. Good morning. We are thrilled to be here with you this morning. This is not our entire campus chorale. This is just a small sampling. We are going to start with When Peace Like a River, which is number 336 in your books, if you would like to follow along. And we are going to sing verses 1, 3, and 4. Peace like a river, the river turneth mine. 
Hearing that chorus a cappella is one of my favorite parts of the hymnal. If you would like to turn to page 356, we're going to sing Breathe on Me, Breath of God. We were working on this last week in rehearsals, and we were sight reading all four parts. And I think the tenor line is especially really lovely in this piece. So if we have any tenors in the audience, sing out nice and strong. Mm. Thank you so much. That was such a treat. And I could hear you all in, in singing this morning. Thank you. This morning's offering is for Lancaster Mennonite School. 
Robert and I have had several connections with the school, including sending two of our children there, and we so appreciate the connections that they have had with their professors and teachers and staff and faculty. Robert also got to coach cross country for many years, and I spent a year um, substitute teaching there. So we appreciate so much their ministry. I'm just curious how many of you all have attended, had a child or grandchild attend, or maybe taught there? Would you raise your hands? Wow, okay. That gives you all a sense of the legacy of the school that you attend. Lancaster Mennonites' vision is that through local and global connections in a Christ-centered community, lives will be transformed and the world will be changed. If you would like to give to this ministry, you can put your offering in the box outside the chaplain's office or send it through campus mail and you can make checks out to Landis Homes. Let's pray, both for this community and for Lancaster Mennonite. Lord Jesus, you place us in communities of faith, of learning, of nurture and care. We lift up to you the community of Landis Homes Bless all who live and work here with your loving compassion. May we reflect the love of God in all we do. God, you give us opportunities to learn and people to guide us. Thank you for the ministry of Lancaster Mennonite School and strengthen them as they strive for their mission of a Christ-centered, transformative community. Holy Spirit, as you are faithful to us, may we also be faithful to you, faithful with our time and energy, faithful with our possessions and wealth. Receive these gifts this morning by your grace. Multiply them and use them that your kingdom may come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. We're now going to sing Salt of the Earth, which is number 226 in your hymnals. Our lovely trio of gentlemen up here, Brennan, Jared, and Landon, are going to sing the leader part, and we invite you all to sing the parts that say all and then also the chorus. Salt of the earth, O oh people, salt for the kingdom of God. Share the flavor of life, O oh people, life in the kingdom of God. Bring forth the kingdom of mercy, bring forth the kingdom of peace, bring forth the kingdom of justice, bring forth the kingdom of
This morning's scripture comes from Matthew 4, verses 18 to 22, and you can find that on the back of your bulletin. The first disciples, verse 18. One day Jesus was walking along the shore of Galilee. He saw two brothers, Simon, who's also called Peter, and Andrew, throwing a net into the water, for they fished for a living. Jesus called out to them, Come, follow me, and I will show you how to fish for people. They left their nets at once and followed him. A little farther up the shore, he saw two other brothers, James and John, sitting in their boat with their father Zebudee, repairing nets. He called to them to come too. They immediately followed him, leaving the boat and their father behind. The sermon this morning, following Jesus on the road, will be given by Kate Greaser. Kate serves as the Director of Donor Guidance and Development at Lancaster Mennonite School. She's inspired each day by the hearts of generosity that she gets to know as she meets donors, alumni, and families of Lancaster Mennonite students. And she loves to share about the ways that students are being impacted through their Lancaster Mennonite experience. She and her husband, Nathan, live in Lancaster City with their two daughters, Ivy and Juniper, who attend elementary school at Lancaster Mennonite. She enjoys reading, gardening, and growing dahlias in her backyard. She also serves as part-time pastoral role at her church, Sunnyside Mennonite Church. Welcome, Kate. Good morning. It is so good to be with you this morning. I am Kate Greaser, and um, it was so beautiful already to see the connections that exist between Lancaster Mennonite and Landis Homes. And I want to thank Audrey for inviting us here um, to help strengthen those, those connections, to explore scripture together, to learn and grow together. And so that I have an opportunity to give you a glimpse. I don't know how long it's been since you have been at Lancaster Mennonite um, or for your children or I've been on campus, but I have some sh- stories to share that, co- that connect to our scripture this morning. So we're going we're gonna to study the scripture together. In case you are not as familiar with Lancaster Mennonite, we are a Anabaptist pre-K through 12th grade school located on Lincoln Highway right near the Tanger Outlets. And we were founded in 1942, Um, but more recently, in 2022, we brought all of our students uh, from our Locust Grove and New Danville Elementary Schools onto our main campus. So all 530 of our students are now on our beautiful 95-acre campus on Lincoln Highway. I want to start by looking at our scripture together this morning. Thanks, Audrey, for reading it to us. Let's see if I can get this to work. Yes, okay. I am going to actually start by reading it again out of this Bible, this children's Bible called the Jesus Storybook Bible. I think even though we're grown-ups, sometimes it helps us to read kids' stories that apply to us. Um, And just it gives us a little bit of a different perspective. So that picture is from this Bible. So right before this, Jesus was in the desert. So that's the context. Jesus left the desert and set about the great rescue. But he was going to get God's people back. But first he needed to find some helpers and friends. He had a lot to do. He would need some people to help him. Who would make good helpers, do you think? Clever ones, rich ones, strong, important ones? Some people might think so but I'm sure by now you don't need me to tell you they'd be wrong. Because the people God uses don't have to know a lot of things or have a lot of things. They just have to need him a lot. One day, Jesus was walking by the Sea of Galilee when he saw some brothers and friends mending their nets. 
They were poor fishermen. Jesus called out to them, let's go. Peter, Andrew, James, and John looked up at this man on the shore, and they couldn't explain it. Their boats needed to be put away. Their nets needed mending. Fish were still wriggling on the shore. But something about this stranger made them just drop their nets and their fish, leave their boats and everything, and follow him. This God-man was like no one they had ever met. Meeting Jesus would change all of them forever. So this process of calling disciples would have been one that the Jewish community of Jesus' time would have been very familiar with. The highest honor a person could have was to become a rabbi. And all rabbis had disciples. And the disciples were chosen from the top students in the rabbinical schools. All children were educated in the study of the Torah. But only the best and the brightest boys would have been chosen by a rabbi to become a disciple. But when Jesus chooses his disciples, he does things a little differently. These fishermen, probably teenagers, they're fishing when he comes to them, which means they are not studying the Torah anymore in school. They very likely have already been told that they don't have what it takes to be the top students. They're back doing the work of their fathers. They're not the cream of the crop. And maybe this is one of our first clues, or second, clues that Jesus is going to turn a lot of things upside down from what we expect. And I think this is really good news for us. The people God uses don't have to know a lot of things or have a lot of things. They just have to need him a lot. The world tells us we should be rich, we should be beautiful, we should be brilliant, we should be powerful. But if we are open, if we know we need Jesus, if we are ready to follow Jesus when he calls us, we can be part of the amazing ministry of healing and reconciliation that God is doing in our world. But this isn't the end of the story. This is just the start. Jesus says, come, follow me. And they do. What? Can you imagine? We have the rest of the story. We know what comes after this. When we make a decision to follow Jesus, we have seen where he has gone. They had nothing. He was just this guy on the beach that said, come and follow me. Did they know he meant follow me around for the next three years? Or did they think he was just saying, come to my mom's house for dinner? What courage they had to leave everything. And what a desire they must have had for something more. So for us today, as we look at those stories from scripture, what does it mean for Jesus to invite us to come and follow him? Where do those stories take us? Where does following Jesus lead us? It leads us to touch the lepers and talk to the scorned women at the well, to feed those who are hungry, to be neighbors who risk our own safety to help those that we hate or that who hate us, to trust in the power of God to heal and to calm storms, to pray and study scripture, to challenge those who harm others with rules and policies, to welcome children and to become like children ourselves, to come to the wedding and join in the party, to love God, to love our neighbors, to love ourselves, to love our enemies, to lay down our lives. 
This is a beautiful list. Doesn't it make you feel warm and full inside? And it's a terribly difficult list. One that can isolate us from the culture around us and can be really hard to hold to. So how do we establish practices for our lives that help us to live in these ways to follow Jesus? Many organizations try to do this by creating core values that they want to live by, the people they want to be known as. And I think we do that as individuals too, maybe not as consciously. What are the core values that you live by that come from following Jesus? At Lancaster Mennonite, we have six core values that we have identified as being significant in how we want to live together as followers of Jesus. They stem from our faith. And so right at the top, you can see our list starts with seeking Jesus wholeheartedly. We want to help students to grow to understand the Jesus that we find in scripture, through prayer practices, through music, nature, and many other ways that God comes to us. And then we do our best to live into this Jesus that we find there. And that leads us to our other core values, living compassionately, building bridges of peace, cultivating global citizens, nurturing curiosity and creativity, and empowering lifelong learning. But it's not just core values that we need. Those sound nice, but how do we live them out? We need practices to help us live them out and to grow more and more in line with who we see Jesus as being. So I want to share a few examples of recent stories of how I see this happening at Lancaster Mennonite. And maybe it'll help you think of stories from your own life. First one is cultivate global citizens. For decades, Lancaster Mennonite has welcomed and hosted international students as part of our school community. Maybe some of you have known some of those international students. This year we have 35 international students from eight different countries as part of our school. And we also have a number of teachers from different places around the world. We also have German students with us here this morning as part of an exchange program um, that our high schoolers do. And we take time to learn about the cultures and celebrate the differences um, from, where, from our, where our students and teachers come from. So here you see um, Senor de la Rosa is teaching the third grade Spanish immersion class how to make tortillas, a food that comes from his home country. We see Jesus in his ministry breaking down barriers between people who are different, between Jews and Gentiles, different tribes and nations, and that's a work that continues through the early church throughout the rest of the New Testament. We want to be a continuation of that work. Nurture curiosity and creativity. Jesus was creative in how he taught the people who followed him. He told stories. He used humor. Sometimes he didn't say anything but just drew in the dirt. He expanded the minds of his followers by doing things they did not expect. And so we try to engage students and encourage them to expand their minds, to think critically, to be curious, and to pursue the questions that they have, to use teamwork to solve problems. Hands-on learning and group projects make learning fun and help to reinforce the subject matter that the students are studying. So here you see second graders who are doing a study of all about air. Where is air? What, is, what can it do? How does it move? And so one of their favorite experiments has been to make these balloon rockets and, and explore what happens. And on the other picture, you see high school students in global studies created board games 
on the topics that they had learned in human geography. And then they played their games as a way to review for their test. Laughter and fun as we learn are a way we follow Jesus. Each year we choose a theme for the school year, something that we want to focus on learning and practicing together. Sometimes it's a particular verse in scripture that we study. This year it's a little bit of a broader focus um, centered on Anabaptist faith practices. And our theme this year is building bridges of peace, which also matches up with one of our core values. So several weeks ago, we had a potluck for faculty and staff, which is something we do once a quarter or so. And as we ate around the table, I asked the teachers that I was sitting with if they had any good um, stories of ways they have seen peacemaking, peace building in their class. And I heard the following story. Monica Carlson is an elementary music teacher at Lancaster Mennonite. And one Friday morning, she had a third grade class who had earned the ability to choose a fun musical activity as part of their class time. And so they chose a game that was kind of a relay. Uh, They were in two teams and they had to compete to get to the chalkboard or the whiteboard first um, to identify the rhythm, the musical rhythm that she was clapping. Now, this particular class she shared, they're very competitive. And so they had done six rounds and it was tie, three to three. So it came time for the tiebreaker and ultimately as competitive games do, they had one winning team and one losing team. And the competitive nature of the students came out and one member of the losing team said something unkind to the member of their own team who had not gotten to the whiteboard first. Mrs. Carlson took the opportunity to enter into some conversation with the class about what does it mean to be a peacemaker when we lose. She shared that coincidentally, she had just read an article in the lunchroom about the Lancaster Mennonite girls soccer team who had played Lancaster Catholic the night before. Lancaster Mennonite lost in overtime. And our coach was quoted in the article congratulating Lancaster Catholic on their win, for their hard work, and their accomplishments as a team. This was particularly meaningful to this class because our girls' soccer coach is a parent of some of the students in this class. And I thought, this story exemplifies so well what we try to do at Lancaster Mennonite. How to be a peacemaker when you lose is not part of a music curriculum but because our faculty immerse themselves in Christ-centeredness. Every moment can be an opportunity to help students to think more about what Jesus is like. Our elementary students can look up to those students who are a few grades ahead of them, and they can be formed in the way of peace. So faith integration at Lancaster Mennonite is not just about going to chapel and taking Bible classes though those are important pieces of our faith and community life. Faith integration is about learning to be peacemakers in music class. What are the core values that come out of seeking Jesus in your life? As you have responded to Jesus' invitation to come and follow him, What practices have helped you to live out these core values? I know this room, this building is full of stories. I have heard some of them and I would love to hear more. As we continue to respond to Jesus' invitation to come and follow, may we grow to be more and more like him, taking the road that fills us with God's spirit even when it is the more difficult road. Blessings to you on the journey, and I'm thankful that we get to journey this path together. Amen.
I didn't know what Kate was going to share about this morning, but that same elementary music teacher, Monica, actually found this next piece that we're going to sing for you, Make Me an Instrument of Your Piece, and suggested that we sing it together at homecoming with the elementary students. So we built bridges between the different grades at Lancaster Mennonite, but also are singing about being an instrument of peace. So this song is not actually printed in your program. The lyrics of the, ver of the chorus are, it's just make me an instrument of your peace, make me an instrument of your peace. We're gonna sing that small section for you, just the chorus, so you can learn it, and then we will sing the whole song, where we will have um, some soloists and some small groups singing the verses, and then you can join us on the chorus, which is just make me an instrument of your peace. Instruments of your peace. Make me an instrument of your peace. That's it. That's the chorus. <laughs> so if you would like to join us anytime you hear that, we would love to sing with you. We've heard some good challenges this morning. I like that last question you left with us. 
Could we make our own list of core values and what would they be? And how are we taking steps to embody them, to live them? Thank you, Kate. Thank you, Campus Corral and Kit. Appreciate all that you brought us this morning, that beautiful music too. After we enjoy one more song from Nancy, I invite you to come to the back. Kate and I will be back there to greet you. And the students, too, um, encourage you to say hello to them. For ascending words, go, knowing that you are beloved by God. Go, praising God for the good news in Jesus Christ. Go, living the message of God's grace, peace, and love. Amen.